The following is a rebroadcast of the Newark City Schools Board of Education's most recent general monthly meeting. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Newark City School District Board of Education. We're meeting at the High School Media Center on March 11, 2013. It is 6.30 p.m. Jeff, call the roll, please. Mr. Blind? Here. Mr. Bybee? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Harden? Here. Mrs. Nickham? Here. All present, we have a quorum of five. And now, uh, Mr. Bybee will lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, could we please stand? We've got a flag over here to my right and your left. Uh, you know, I uh, my, my dad once told me, if you ever come to a meeting and you show up two things, you'll always be a success, and those two things are thanks and gratitude. And, uh, you know, this last weekend, my gosh, you know, we were able to see a lot of successes. And uh, if we see a look at the program, you know, the, the success that we've had with, uh, with the basketball programs, the, the girls and the boys, uh, the bowling team, uh, the wrestling team, uh, just a lot of things to be thankful for and have gratitude for in, in, in our community. Uh, I, I noticed yesterday, too, my gosh, what a great day yesterday was. And uh, as I was out on the bike path with about 500 other people out there just trying to clamor for all the sun and heat and warmth and escape the winter for just a bit, uh, again, it made me uh, give thanks and gratitude for the community that we live in. And so uh, I hope you feel the same way. I hope you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you want to bring me, I'll bring you a... Uh, thank you, Dan. We move on to resolutions and recognitions. Okay, thanks, Mrs. Nickham. First, I'd like to recognize Legend Elementary School for being a school of promise. This was on last year's uh, student data. So I'd ask uh, Ms. Cooper to come up to the uh, podium, please. Okay. The principal at Legend. Uh, lat, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be going to Columbus and, and celebrating with McGuffey Elementary, who was a school of promise from a year prior to that. But uh, Legend Elementary, great elementary, great staff, uh, wonderful energy in that building. Basically, a school of promise. Uh, you get it for ac academic performance over a two year period. It's a building with free and reduced lunch of at least over 40%. And I, and I believe, Ellen, you're probably, what, about 42? About 47. About 47, uh, which, by the way, is, is the, uh, probably the lowest uh, free and reduced we, we have in the district from that building. But uh, what, what I enjoy about that is it doesn't uh, matter what your income level is or any of those kind of things. Uh, everybody, can, every child can learn. And, and legend uh, prove that. So Ellen, would you want to share a few words? Thank you, Doug. Uh, I'm just so proud to be here to accept uh, your uh, recognition from the Board of Education at New York City Schools. It means a lot to us, at least as much as ODE recognizing us, that's for sure. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to introduce some of my staff who are here because it's really their award. They work so hard day in and day out believe in every one of the children who walk in our door that they can succeed they can grow and I, they are an inspiration to me so if I can take a few minutes to introduce them to you would you stand please can I have them come up here closer <laughs> you have to do it <laughs> We have this big open area. I yeah, told him for your song and dance you were doing tonight. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm just going to ask fire. them. I'm just going to introduce them and let them kind of walk across and, and stand over on that side. <laughs> First is Sadie Worthen. Sadie's one of our kindergarten teachers. Megan Beers, third grade. We have one of our housekeepers, Debbie Miner, here, which representing our custodial staff. So thrilled to have her here today. Ann Sloboda, our preschool teacher. Missy Grimmett, our social worker, half time with us, half time with Hillview. Susie Fox, our health aide. Thank you, Susie. Melissa Broshak, second grade. Carolyn Wells, our cashier and volunteer. So she cashiers for two hours, volunteers for six. So <laughs> we, we love her. <laughs> Judy Bartlett, second grade. Denise Anderson, third grade. 
Mary Guttridge, Jack of all trades, secretary, administrative assistant, the go-to gal. <laughs> Rachel Fielhauer, fifth grade. Kathy Willis, our preschool classroom aide. Alice Perini, fifth grade. Sally Mummy, our, our primary literacy coordinator. Courtney Johnson, our intermediate literacy coordinator. Kathy, or excuse me, Connie Mathis, our intervention specialist. Now Kathy Holbert, our kindergarten teacher. Natalie Halter, our art teacher. Judy Nelson, one, to one of our intervention specialists. And Henry Green, our school psychologist. Thank you for letting me introduce them. Many others who were not able to attend tonight, and they send their, their condolences. So uh, again, thank you so much for recognizing us. We're very proud of our students and uh, the wonderful work that they do. So again, wonderful. Thank you. I will apologize in advance. Uh, some of us still have work to do this evening, so some of us will be leaving and uh, getting back to school. I'm speaking for myself as one that uh, has some work to do yet before I end my day. So thank you for your recognition. Thank you. Congratulations. As the uh, staff is sitting down, you know, I'll make one other comment. As, as we do our, our building visits and talk about the various buildings, we talk about the, the climate in the building and, and uh, Legend Elementary, uh, wonderful climate. Uh, you can tell, and I'll, I'll share some things in our health assessment today, but you can tell that these, these staff members really enjoy their job. Uh, they treat their, their students and their uh, parents and the community and each other with a lot of respect, and, and you can really tell that when you go in that building. So thanks again as they all sprint for the door, which is fine. That's why we put you up front. Now get back to that classroom and work. So thank you again. Under item B, under uh, recognitions tonight, we'd like to ask uh, Coach Jose Martinez of the wrestling program to come forward and introduce his wrestler. Hello. I'd like to thank the board and Mr. Ute for giving us the time to recognize our wrestler. Um, today I have here Dan Pastorius. He's a two-time district qualifier for us with over 40 wins in the last few years. Um, he also, we're hoping big things for him next year. He still has one more year for us, so hopefully next year get us to the state tournament. Dan Pastorius. Dan, would you like to say a few words? Probably not. Really. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to point out to the board and our community what a good uh, leader you are in our, in our building and how much we appreciate that. You're a good young man, and we appreciate your efforts. So thanks for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you once again. And Jose. Thank you. So uh, fun meeting as we're recognizing a lot of the good things we have going on uh, here at Newark High School. Uh, two Saturdays ago, I think that's where I got my cold and my sore throat, so I'm just kind of getting over right now, but I had an opportunity to go down to the state bowling uh, tournament uh, uh, down in Columbus and watch our bowling team uh, participate. We had a bowling squad, uh, young men that won a district match and, and represented uh, Newark very well at the uh, state bowling tournament. 18 teams in the state make that tournament, and we were one of 18 teams. And uh, I would share with the the fellows, it's, it's quite a, a process, a, a bowling match. Uh, and I, as I walked down through and watched teams as we were on uh, breaks and moving lanes and those kind of things, I would, I would put our bowlers up against any team there in terms of attitude and, and having Newark on their back of their jerseys and representing our, our school. Uh, I saw a lot of attitudes from a lot of schools when, uh, when things might not have been going so well. And, and our kids didn't get off to the greatest start, but they battled and they competed and they kept a, a very positive attitude. And I really appreciate their efforts. So is uh, uh, Coach Smart here? Is he back there in the back? So, okay, who's going to represent the bowling? How, how, fellas, how about coming up front, if you would, please? Yeah, come on up here. Come on up here so we can see you. We've got three of the, the six that went. As you're walking up, I'm going to give each of you a chance to be a good leader tonight. Step up to the microphone, look at the board in the eye, tell them who you are, and, and tell them something about your season, if you would, please. 
All right. Um, I'm Devin Walters, and I'm a senior. And I did want to say that this is the first year that you know the team really came together and we worked as a team, and that's why I think we made it as far as we did. Instead of being everyone for themselves, it was everyone was together, and that's why I think we made it as a team. Um, hi, I'm Alex Hoffman. Um, this is my second year for New York Bowling. I'm a sophomore. And it's probably one of the best things I've ever been a part of. And I really can't say much more about it than it's just amazing. One of the best experiences ever. And it was a good part to be a part of this team this year. And um, I'm really hoping we do good like this next year. So. Hi again. Hello. <laughs> Uh, I'm Cole German, junior, uh, third year with him. It's my first year on varsity, and I kind of like Alex said, it's a real honor to be a part of the state, and it's a lot of fun. It has been for the past three years, and hopefully we can make it there next year and qualify for the championship round. And Cole, I want to mention something because <coughs> I watch you. Five bowlers bowl, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, five bowlers bowl, and we have one alternate if, uh, or substitute. Uh, Cole, I believe you were the substitute at the uh, uh, state tournament. Am I correct? Uh, David Ball and I, my another junior, he couldn't make it. I'm not sure if he was aware of the meeting tonight or not. Okay. And uh, two others, our seniors, Zach Peck and Austin Martin, had to work tonight. And I believe uh, Dylan Maring, our other sophomore, had a uh, baseball practice. I was going to ask you a question. Did you roll one ball at the state tournament? No, I did not. You did not, but I want to compliment you on your attitude. Uh, you couldn't tell that when, when I was walking around, and I was very impressed. Uh, and that, that's one of the things I had mentioned earlier. Uh, and you, you guys alluded to it, about the teamwork and, and supporting each other. And a lot of kids might be upset that they didn't get a chance to throw a ball, but I was very impressed with you and your attitude. You were into every frame and your teammates, and there was no pouting going on for, for Cole, was there? No. <laughs> that's, all, that's awesome. That, that's awesome to, to uh, have that kind of an attitude. So I appreciate seeing that. That's, that's great leadership. So thank all three of you and your teammates. And uh, uh, before you, you head back, I would, I would talk to the board. We had a couple months ago, we had some people uh, talk to the board about bowling. We went back and did a little research uh, on the bowling. And, and uh, believe it or not, there's no board action we could find. There's nobody, it seems, to know what the uh, rule was when a club sport has started up in the district. A lot of times from what we find out from other schools is that uh, some schools make an agreement and you know you go club for a couple years if you have a certain amount of bowlers the district will will uh, uh, make that a, a varsity sport. Uh, so you know I, I can tell you that I'm going to be recommending to the board uh, this spring that they go ahead and, and make that a uh, uh, varsity and JV and varsity uh, sport and so uh, thanks for bringing that to our attention, and we really appreciate your efforts. And again, one of 18 schools, I know you finished 13th, uh, which was awesome. If you think about it, you finished 13th in the state, only 18 teams get invited down there. And there's a lot of schools uh, out there bowling. So that's quite an accomplishment. But again, thanks for your attitude and your leadership. Appreciate you. Thank you. special reports high school busing okay we're going to ask Jason Key to come up front uh, as you know uh, a year ago uh, the board was gracious enough and Jason worked very hard along with Mr. Alta Peter put together a plan to uh, uh, do cluster stops around the city uh, find out where our kids could walk to pick our kids up and get them around and Jason's going to do a little slide presentation uh, tonight as uh, we look at, uh, at next year Thank you, Doug. Uh, good evening. Uh, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Uh, unfortunately, the slideshow is very factual uh, in its nature, so it is going to be very dry. I've tried to throw in some pictures. I even threw in a comic strip just to try to break it up a little bit, but uh, please bear with me understand it's very dry and factual here. Okay. Uh, we have five designated high school stops. Uh, we have a stop at Cedar Street in Garfield, one at Ben Franklin. One at Carson, one at McMillan in West Main, one at Derby Downs and North 21st. As you can see, we hit about the, just about every part of the district, northeast, south, southeast, west, and north. Here are the numbers. Uh, what we did is we took an average uh, of ridership. 
Uh, I did it over a two-week period, trying to come up with pretty good numbers. They were fairly similar each day, uh, might have varied by one or two students. Uh, there was even a late arrival day in there for one of them, so that does kind of show a very accurate, accurate picture. Uh, as you can see, there's total number of riders of 87, total number of buses used three, and as you can see, the, the heaviest uh, amount of bus ridership is out on the east and the southeast side, Carson and at Cedar and Garfield. Uh, we also do busing in the PM. We only need to use two buses in the PM. We have a total number of riders of 39. Uh, again, as you can see, Cedar and Garfield and Carson are the biggest ridership. Now what I did is, on this next slide, I tried to give kind of a percentage. I took uh, the number of students within a half mile from each of those stops, and I tried to show you because as you can see from the previous slide, there was only seven riders at one stop or only 12 riders at another stop. But that doesn't actually show the full picture. The percentage shows basically between 30 and 45% ridership at each of the stops. So although the one might only have seven, there's really only 15 or 20 kids within a half mile of that stop. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of what we're showing here for percentages. Uh, estimated costs. Uh, when we had talked about initially doing it, we were doing it for the last three months of the year of 2012. I came up with an estimate of about $5,000. Uh, so we anticipated in 2013 about $15,000. Uh, as uh, I was showing you on the previous slide, the anticipated ridership is going to be, uh, was a little bit higher than we expected this year. Uh, we had lower numbers last year. So we had to add an additional bus in the AM just for the volume of riders. So we, I calculated the actual costs this year. Uh, we're showing mileage costs of about $50.91, driver wages of about $50.21, so a total cost per day of $101, and total estimated cost for 2013 is $17,594. Now there are some additional uncalculated costs. Uh, there are driver's wages for when the high school does you know, early release uh, for uh, standardized testing or some of the other things we're actually going to be experiencing that next week so we do have to pay drivers to come in early and do that earlier busing and there's also costs uh, associated to the high school to keep staff on hand to be able to supervise these riders that will ride in the p.m. because we aren't able to get there until about four o'clock in the afternoon 345 to four o'clock so uh, if you have any questions please feel free Thank you. I mentioned as Jason's going back uh, to the seat, how much we appreciate uh, Jason. We've, we've got a bridge out over by Ben Franklin. Uh, we, so we had some people at the, the bottom of the hill that had to walk all the way around 13 all the way to Ben Franklin. Uh, every time I call Jason, he's very quick to come up with a solution. Uh, something I, I don't, I think I might have missed Jason or maybe it wasn't on there that, you know, went, doesn't need to be on there, but I do want to mention. Uh, Jason and our transportation department, our drivers are very good about uh, <clears throat> finding a way for kids uh, such as over at Heritage to get over to Evans Complex for track after uh, school and, and those kind of things. And our early indications, now they haven't been out running around a track yet and, and, and we'll see, but our numbers are way up in, in our track uh, program. A lot of our coaches are getting out and, and beating the bushes and the transportation from the middle schools out to Evans and and those kind of things are huge. And so uh, we appreciate the transportation department taking care of our kids. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, construction update. Uh, Dave, uh, if you, you, you want to just, I know I didn't tell Dave you had to do anything, <laughs> but this is, this is easy for Dave. Hey, Dave, you want to tell the board about Roosevelt, how we're coming to Roosevelt? Uh, yeah, see, I knew he could. <laughs> Uh, we're moving along nicely at Roosevelt Middle School, uh, probably on or ahead of schedule. Uh, those things, however, I always throw in the caveat, can turn on a dime. Uh, you know, one month you're, you're looking great for uh, meeting your goal as an, in, as an end time or substantial completion, uh, which we've set for in August, and actually LACA as one of our tenants to move in a little earlier than that because they have a very narrow window 
to shut down their operation on Union and get up and restart at our spot. Uh, but we're still pretty confident that we're going to be in there uh, towards the latter part of August, uh, that we'll have everything substantially complete. And uh, we'll have folks from our district. Uh, there's been some emails already started. Uh, uh, Larry Williams is working on uh, pulling a group together for the latter part of the summer to shut down our operation and literally pick up our bag and baggage from uh, the, the Administrative Service Center at 85 East Main Street and get our goodies moved up to, uh, to Roosevelt towards uh, the Roosevelt Building, as it's going to be called, at the end of, uh, at the end of this summer. So things are going well. Uh, Robertson uh, Construction and the su their subs are doing uh, wonderful work for us. We meet with them, uh, our architects, myself, Larry Williams, every Tuesday morning and spend time with them uh, going over the schedule and how we're doing and things are going real well. So any questions about it? Hey, I got a question. Uh, there's a, a, a show on HGTV called Love It or List It. Mm -hmm. And after these renovations, are we going to love that property or we're going to list it? Hey, we're going to love that thing, okay. I tell you. <laughs> we're going to love it. Thank you. Uh, depends on what we can list it for, too, right? <laughs> yeah, you never know. But uh, I'd share as Dave's uh, taking his seat. Uh, again, I try to do this as much as possible because I want our board and our community to understand the value of, of Dave's work uh, over the last uh, – several years here but mainly with the building project and uh, we're knocking on the door and, and I, I was uh, talking to somebody the other day on the phone I pulled in here the high school and I was like wow no construction trailers on the property right now and it's starting to look like a school again I know Dave and his uh, guys worked on uh, the final uh, uh, bidding package here which is basically from the behind the fine arts building if you just swing right around the media center here and through the down around the corner on, a, on the paving package, which will happen this summer. We've got a door package going out. We've got some odds and ends uh, still cleaning up in some other buildings and some punch list here and, and those type of things. But, uh, uh, and then Dave thought he was done, and here we threw Roosevelt on his lap that way. But uh, great leadership at, uh, internally at Roosevelt. Uh, we've already started to schedule things uh, with LACA and, and uh, uh, the ESC online, so an online scheduling uh, deal uh, uh, with the shared spaces in there. Uh, this is not an OSFC project, so we do not have funds for furniture. Most of the furniture that the ASC will take over there, we already have. Uh, but we've been garage sanding a little bit. Uh, we went and bought uh, uh, three conference tables for uh, basically next to nothing. And then our good neighbor over here to the west, uh, uh, State Farm, Kim Lust, and I believe it's Kathy Williams, you know, Kathy Williams. Uh, they had us out uh, to look at some furniture and and said have uh, take what you need uh, out of here in their storage that uh, they weren't using anymore and and really nice stuff and so we appreciate State Farm thinking of us and as they always do and and so thank you to State Farm for that well, we're excited about it so things are going well uh, I promise we're gonna get to the treasurer's report uh, uh, very shortly but uh, technology update I'm gonna do the technology update tonight we're gonna step back and and uh, do something a little bit different. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce Angie McCutcheon. Angie, if you'd please stand up and come on up to the microphone, please. Uh, Angie uh, was hired, uh, well, you've been on the job about six weeks. And week eight. Week eight already. Yeah. And boy, is she really moving. <laughs> uh, um, I pride myself, and I, I you know, tell our directors and things when we're interviewing, uh, you know, I know people. And five minutes into her interview, uh, we could have just stopped and said, hey, you want this job or not? But we sat in there for about an hour and a half to hour and 45 minutes, and uh, Angie comes with a back. Well, I'm going to let you talk about your background. Would you please uh, fill us in on that? Okay. Uh, I've worked in higher education for 23 years, uh, most recently at a high university for seven years as their director of electronic administration in their grad college. I also worked at Washington State Community College in Marietta, Ohio as their director of microcomputer training and um, uh, co-built the Center for Business and Technology there. So uh, have a back, strong background in technology and uh, PhD in instructional technology so what else do you want to know well, <laughs> you might tell them what I enjoy hearing from you you're, you're, a, you're a tech geek with a personality and you can <laughs> yeah. tell that 
<laughs> and she is uh, very, not that you're a geek, but you, you know. I have geeky tendencies, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I think what, one of the things we've been very impressed with with uh, Angie is her ability to uh, evaluate some things and, and problem solve. And uh, not, not just with the network, but with personnel. And uh, because we're, we're making a lot of changes, and I'm going to share some things with you. And, and does anybody have a question or a comment for Angie? Or I do. Uh, it, it's, it's great to have you here and, and, and to you. meet you. I um, heard a lot of great things about you and you know your background. Uh, my gosh, uh, we're very fortunate to have you in the system here. My, my question is, you've been here for about eight weeks now, and, and you've probably seen the lay of the land here. Uh, what what would you have on your short list of maybe the two or three most pressing needs that we have in the technology area? We still have some computers that we want to get into, about six schools, student computers. So that's something that I'm working very hard on, trying to identify some budget dollars to make sure that all of the schools have the level of technology that they need to be connected. And you're saying we need the equipment. We don't have the equipment. Yes, we're working on... Equipment, not having them in the schools. Yes, we have um, seven schools that we've already updated uh, very well and are, are uh, to the technology standard that we would like them to be. And we have about six more grade schools where uh, in middle schools total uh, we're we've got the teacher computers replaced and we're working on replacing those student computers other things that uh, we're working on we're taking a hard look at uh, bring your own device and how that's going to look in our district and rolling that out within the next year and I've been spending a lot of time with E-Rate trying to bring some dollars uh, back into the community some reimbursement dollars uh, federal dollars to help us pay for our internet connectivity so those have probably been the three primary things that I've been most focused on and is there grant money out there that is available for these types of things or is it pretty scarce if it's there we go for it I see that they're already doing a lot of that uh, I think uh, some of the grant dollars that used to be there aren't there now but uh, still seems to be some available Thank you, Angie. We Thank appreciate you. that. And welcome aboard again. And very impressed with the first two months of uh, Angie's work. Uh, <clears throat> on a tech update, we want to just take a few minutes and and because uh, we ask our staff every now and then to just uh, stop and take a step back and and see where we were and where we're at and where we're going. I think sometimes you get so wrapped up in what you're doing, you you kind of get lost and feel like your feet are in the mud and you're not moving. Uh, fast enough so I just wanted to kind of uh, recap this past year and, and where we're, where we where we were at and where we're going to go and particularly uh, it's a k-12 issue with technology uh, but particularly in this high school and I would share that uh, one of the things we're most proud of here we work very closely with Jeff who does a great job with our budgets and, and finances uh, you know we're we're uh, anytime we get an idea how's that cost neutral or does it save us money and last year we made a, a giant step, as you know, with reallocating some funds. Again, I, I, I mentioned, and it's been a while since I mentioned this, we spent less this past year in our curriculum uh, department uh, than we did a year ago. And we have 500 devices, uh, 400 MacBooks, and 100 iPads here in the building. And so uh, I try to mention we did not increase our budget. That was just reallocating how we spent our textbook budget. And so we started uh, last year looking at that and how we can change some things here at the high school. Uh, and, I, and, and three staff members, again, didn't add a staff member, reallocated what they do. Uh, so we, we looked at our money and, and uh, look, we took Marcy Waymer, who is a uh, history teacher here at the high school. Alice Kovach is a science teacher. And Amy Norman, who was a, watch that word, librarian. Uh, now she's a media specialist type of thing. And these three ladies, or two ladies and, and one young man, uh, Alex, are very progressive, very high energy, have done a wonderful job uh, working with kids and working with students uh, and integrating technology into this building. And so again, we didn't add any staff here. We just changed uh, what we were doing. And so it's nice that we have a, a history and a science teacher involved in that. Uh, Amy, as you know, retired, is back now in the building as a sub. Uh, because she spent her time out uh, so she's back in the building now working in the sub if you look over to your left it's kind of their department 
one of the things Dave was able to do in the 12th hour here uh, for our media center here is put a bunch of charging stations so we kind of changed some things from uh, 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 the construction point of where where the district planned on their high school and and needs change so we have a bunch of I'm not sure how many how many power stations do we have over there Amy or Marcy right here, but there's, uh, many in the back yeah there's many in the, yeah there's many in the back office so you know our kids can come in here I know Two weeks ago, I walked in here. I just missed. There was about 80 students in here with, with uh, uh, some technology and doing some things. A lot of our classrooms right now, a lot of our teachers have integrated technology into their classroom uh, learning. And so, for our staff, a year ago, uh, we basically placed these in their hands uh, late last spring and early summer, and and told them to see what you can do with it and. And again, uh, we shared this before, but we asked them to rate their cells from 1 to 10. And no matter where you're at, if you're a 3, become a 4. If you're a 6, become a 7. And, and I know in talking with uh, a lot of staff here and asking them that question, where do you think you're at? Well, I thought it was a 4. Now I think I'm a 7. And so our staff has really uh, taken uh, a hold of this uh, uh, initiative and, and uh, really got, got moving. So with the Mac books and the, the iPads, again, reallocation of funds. Uh, teacher professional development was huge for us. So uh, we have uh, progress uh, they've, they've made with these, the iBooks. Students are creating iBooks or uh, textbooks. Uh, teachers are creating textbooks. Uh, we're doing some blended learning, some split classrooms. Our music program approached us with a very inexpensive uh, deal where the, the, uh, uh, the band and the symphony will have a space here at the high school and space at all three middle schools where students can go and excuse me, I'm not sure the name of the, the program, but basically you can go play a trumpet, a saxophone in a room by yourself and it'll show you from a technology standpoint what notes you missed. And so from an assessment standpoint, which we need to do, this is a great as assessment. And that, and that came from our, our staff. And so that, that's what's happening. Our, a lot of our staff are thinking, how can I integrate this? And again, uh, I know uh, uh, our music program is going to benefit from that. So th then as the, at the middle school, <clears throat> we're looking at purchasing some carts for some laptops. Again, we're preparing ourselves for the online testing, uh, which whether we like it or not, it's here. And so, uh, uh, you know, we need to get those uh, laptops out to our kids, become familiar with those. You know, if you're, we certainly want them to feel comfortable with the device they're being tested on. And, and their mistakes shouldn't come from a technology standpoint, uh, which is a fear of mine with, we're not, we're not really assessing whether or not you know how to do something with technology if you're talking about history. But the online assessments are here. So in the elementary, we're looking at uh, title funds uh, uh, to purchase some, some of, of those carts. A smart board in every room. We've got iPads, clickers, Mobies. So from a K-12 standpoint, uh, you know, again, we're looking at that assessment tool uh, with technology. Also, um, pilot program for bring your own device. Uh, that's what Angie was talking about a few minutes ago at the high school. Uh, we will have a pilot program the last nine weeks of school. We wanted to make sure as kids, yes, this year, uh, the last nine weeks. And, and uh, Ms. Horgan, when does the last nine weeks start? Do you? After spring break. After spring break, the last nine weeks uh, will start. So, so and we'll, we'll start with uh, just from our, our building visits and, and some things we learned. We'll start uh, with some teachers who feel comfortable with it. Uh, the students can bring uh, their own device in. We'll have a list of uh, recommended devices to, to bring in. We'll, we'll notify parents, those type of things. I was sharing with Mrs. Horgan and uh, Mrs. Vaughn a little bit ago that uh, I walked through the commons area today in study hall, and a young lady had an iPad. And uh, she was reading, uh, that, and she told me that's where, where she does all her reading off her iPad and has all, all everything downloaded on that. So those are some examples of... Uh, you know where, where we're headed uh, we hope that the nine weeks goes successful and it builds it's a building block into the start of the next school year where uh, kids will be able to bring their own device in the building 
big challenge for our tech department uh, with a new building. Everybody says, oh, you got all new equipment. Well, that has to be up and running. So we wanted to make sure that, uh, I, I think we have well over 100 access points, correct, in this building? Angie, do you know that? Well over 100. So we, you know, uh, we want to make sure everything works for the kids and the staff. And, and so we do have some staff that are ready to, to roll with that. And what we learned from others, other districts, well, maybe Mr. Ute's not ready when we start, but in two weeks, maybe I am. And uh, again, we stress this with technology. This doesn't mean that's 100% instruction with technology. Some days you come and you don't use your iPad or your device, whatever that may be. Other days you come, uh, you might use it a week straight. You might use it half a period. Uh, the building visits we, we've done with some, uh, some other districts, uh, a lot of times you see uh, those devices sitting right down by their desk. And if you talk to them a little bit, say, well, we're not using it today. And so uh, uh, we've tried to learn. Hopefully we're going to jog a little bit and then uh, next August come out sprinting. So uh, that's where we're at with the, uh, with the technology. So again, look back 12 months and see where we were. Uh, look where we're at now and look where we're headed. Uh, a lot of good things going on in the district. So I appreciate everybody's uh, willingness to, to work together and, and to provide our kids those opportunities. Questions on technology? Thank you, Doug. We'll move on. Oh. You, you... oh, sorry, Ms. Nickham. This is an important point. You can't ask yourself uh, a question. You can't ask yourself. <laughs> okay. I did want to point out because this this is this is big. Uh, Mr. Roy uh, put together a Google Docs of of our board agenda, and so our board can go paperless now. And you'll see the, the laptops up here. And from our standpoint. Uh, if we're asking our staff to do it and our, and our kids to, to do it, I, I think it's important that the board and administration model what we're asking everybody to do. So we're getting better. January we piloted it. Here, see, it's only a few months later, and everybody was up and moving today, and, and uh, you're doing good. So I appreciate the board's willingness to do that. So thank you. Yeah, we were actually all logged on <coughs> for the meeting to start this month, so uh, we're getting there. Uh, now we're going to move on to communications from the floor. Can, can I ask yeah. a procedural question? Um, we have these resolutions, but we never voted on the resolutions. Do we need to? No. For recognition? No, right, Joe? No, they're not Free. Nothing legal binding or anything. Thank like you. That. But thank you, Kurt. Now we'll move on to communication from the floor. Uh, at this time, anyone wishing to address the board, <coughs> you come to the podium, please give your name and address, and you may speak for up to five minutes. Does anyone wish to address the board at this time? Hello, I'm Richard Knox. Um, our sign goes to Cherry Valley. My wife, Cindy. Cindy Knox, our address is 218 North Westmore. Hi, I'm Jennifer Dillo. My son goes to Cherry Valley. I live at uh, 325 Hudson Avenue. Okay, we um, have some serious concerns regarding Cherry Valley Elementary. There's been several recent incidents that has us very concerned for our children's safety and well-being. On Friday, December 7th, a substitute in the library at Cherry Valley was upset with our children's class detained them after school, making the entire class miss their buses. We went to get our son's bus. He was not on the bus. We were absolutely frantic. She detained them as a punishment and made seven and eight-year-old children miss their bus. Three weeks ago, there was a sub in our class. She asked a, a boy student to sit down. He did not sit down. She slapped him on the back. Last week, another sub in the class. She called the entire class dumb, mean, told them there was no way they loved their families, told them that they hated their brothers and sisters, and at the end of the day stated, I hope I never see any of you ever again. Again, these are seven and eight year old children. Last Thursday on March 7th, a child in the class brought a knife. He brought the knife out of his pocket, held it up to a little girl's wrist, 
and informed the little girl he was going to cut her hand off. The little girl screamed, and that is what got the teacher's attention. He was taken to the office and sat in the office for the rest of the day. To our knowledge, there's a zero tolerance policy, and I feel that that policy was not followed. We're concerned as to why he was not suspended with an out of school suspension. This child also has informed his entire class. He got a gun for Christmas and has made it known that he would like to bring the gun to school, that he plays on the playground with the gun after school hours. We're concerned that he could hide the gun and retrieve it the next day during recess. I brought this to the principal's attention with no success and no satisfaction. When you complain about something, there is never any follow-up. You are never told, that there's no follow-up period. I don't think some of these subs should be back in the building. They should be blocked from Cherry Valley Elementary. And I also feel that a knife brought into a second grade classroom is a very serious, serious matter and should be treated as a serious matter. Thank you for your time. Can I ask a clarifying question? Were the three different substitutes uh, that you're talking about? Um, yes. Th so those were three different substitutes. So those substitutes. were different substitutes, not the same substitute. Correct, that did three different. These two, three things you mentioned here. And your child was in all those classes? It's the same class every time. Okay. The same second grade class. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Dillo. Um, my son is also in the same class with Cindy's son, and um, there's been several issues like the ones that she's named, and um, I have brought it to the principal's attention, and it just doesn't seem like there's any follow-up or any follow-through with anything that we address there. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention tonight, that I'm concerned about that. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'm not sure if it's a problem with a mom coming in or what have you, but I had to go in myself to get any kind of attention to any of the problems and still no resolve so and <coughs> I just don't think that um, seven and eight year olds need to come home upset which has happened a lot and uh, just don't know what to do can't seem to get a hold of anyone or be able to talk to anybody that she can actually talk to so thank you thank you thank you Does anyone else wish to address the board this evening Doug, can you check into that and let us know? And oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know that uh, Barbara is sitting there taking notes, and uh, we'll be on that tonight, actually. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm hearing things for the first time tonight. Uh, so we, we will check into it. So. All right, moving on to Treasurer's recommendations. Jeff? Item 2A is a approval of the board meeting minutes from the February 11th 2013 regular meeting item 2b is approval of February 2013 financial statements and payment to the vendors included in this was that we earned interest on our bank accounts of three thousand one hundred twelve dollars and fifty one cents our general fund has twelve point six million dollars in it bond retirement has one point five million dollars in it permanent improvement has one point eight million dollars the building fund has three point seven million dollars Food service has 900,000. OSFC Project Local has 100,000. OSFC Project State Shared has 2.5 million. Classroom facilities have 1.9 million. Other miscellaneous is 2.9 million. For a total in bank of 26,074,159 and 62 cents. Item 2D is approval of the fiscal year 2013 supplemental per permanent appropriation resolution. Uh, we have changes in 019 other grants. $5,000 was donated from the NEA for Legend Elementary iPads, specifically Shelly Herman and Jennifer Keene. 019 other grants was $500 from the Licking County Foundation, Barry Moore to Wilson Middle School for a smart board. Uh, fund 401 as auxiliary services was reduced by ODE by 21,275.80. That particularly impacts schools like Newark Catholic and the Montessori <coughs> School. Uh, fund 599 other federal grants 
was increased thirteen thousand five hundred dollars specifically for FEMA. Uh, the next thing, item two E, is acceptance of donation on the behalf of Call to College. Uh, Eli Lilly did a match of Stephen South's donation of five hundred dollars. Uh, and then item 2F is the authorization for me to immediately disperse that $500 from the Eli Lilly match to call to college for $500. Uh, item 2G is the approval of the Licking Area Computer <coughs> Association service provider contract, internet service with Windstream and LACA, customer service agreements that was in Appendix 2G. <coughs> that was part of the work that we were talking about that Angie McCunch has been working on for her first eight weeks being here. And it is a part of the E-rate where we do receive federal money reimbursement for a lot of that. Item 2H is approval to pay invoices. Uh, this, these invoices were also in your appendix 2H. It totals $5,844.90. They specifically were invoices from Smiling with Hope Bakery, which is Mr. Glazinski's class. We had a slight miscommunication between my department, Mr. Glashinsky. He was holding invoices. He thought we were being billed direct, and we were not. So uh, they were more than three months old, past due, and they were more than $3,000. So legally, I had to bring that before the board for the approval. But we think we have that problem corrected now. I would hope that if there's no questions, that you would approve items 2A through H. So moved. Second. Okay, there's been a motion that's been seconded to approve Treasurer's recommendations to A through H. Any discussion? The first was Mr. Harden, the second was Tom B. Tom B. Okay. My hearing's going, so I had to make sure I got the right one. I would just, do you have more specifics on the um, LACA and Windstream contract? Uh, the appendix is in there. If Angie's here, maybe she can talk to it more. Yeah. The uh, LACA contract is our internet connectivity to all of our schools. It's the fiber that uh, connects all of our, our buildings. Um, we pay for uh, the internet connectivity um, for really ev everything that we do um, that connects uh, the school. So that's what that is for. And it does connect all 13, I believe there's 13 buildings total to make sure that we all have adequate uh, internet access. The wind stream is for our local um, phone service. And uh, that is to all the buildings. That includes our um, things like fire alarms, our security system, all of the phone uh, systems that come into the schools. Uh, as well as uh, what we call PRI, which are two fibers um, uh, currently that are coming into the ASC, uh, again, that has to do with uh, internet connectivity and phone service. So this is different than our annual contract that we already have with LACA for services? Yes. Yes. And uh, E-rate requires that we renew this. Uh, on, on a regular basis and that a contract be signed uh, and so uh, that's the purpose of those contracts tonight okay thank you Angie mm -hmm. any other questions or discussion for treasurer's recommendations if not call the roll please Jeff Mr. Harden yes Mr. Blind yes Mr. Bybee yes Mr. Carr yes Mrs. Nickham yes motion carries there mm -hmm. is one other thing that I did not have on the agenda because I'm not ready for it on the agenda, but it is in your packet that I provided the board. Uh, you'll see a page on there, Summer of Refunding Results. Just wanted to make sure that you all were aware because I discussed it in the Finance Committee. I'm looking at refinancing some more of our bond construction bonds. And if you look in the middle of the page, the proposal appears that we could save about $2.5 million for the taxpayers. That will be on a later agenda once we get all the numbers together and get that prepared for the approval of the, of the board to proceed. So I just want to let you know we're working on it and no action needed in this board meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Moving on to superintendent's recommendations. Okay, under A, personnel. I'm gonna read down through a list and again, we will invite all retirees in uh, to uh, a later meeting. But we do have some retirees. We're up to, uh, Barbara, what'd you tell me today? 14, about 14 staff members right now. 
uh, and, and again, STRS making some changes in the next couple years. We're you know we're we're going to uh, have uh, this situation. So I want to recognize Jan Adzik, uh, sixth grade math at Wilson. Dale Bowman, seventh grade social studies at Liberty. Rebecca Bringardner, who is seventh grade science at Liberty. Donna Demarest, third grade at McGuffey. Joe Dowling, it's a substitute. Uh, Sarah Ewing, third grade, John Clem. Sherry Judy, reading recovery, Title I at Clem. <clears throat> I ask you to remove Tara King from your list uh, for tonight, please. Jane Kruger, phys ed at, at John Clem. Catherine Miller, reading recovery at Carson. Cheryl Murphy, high school math. Alan Norovic, Seventh grade science at Wilson, Betty Neptune, first grade Ben Franklin, Kate Orm, fourth grade at McGuffey. Also under the classified staff, Bill Keezer out at uh, Ben Franklin, and Elizabeth Tate. So we we'll appreciate the work and effort of all those staff members. You removed Tara King? We removed Tara King, yes, sorry. Sorry, yeah. I, that was my fault. I didn't get it. Um, also, like to point out, if you look at A4, supplemental contracts, uh, last week we had sent out a, a uh, report, a composite report that may have helped you list them a little bit different on here so they're back-to-back -back so it's a little easier to understand and read. Uh, basically, what we have, again, we're adding no money to our supplementals, so we're not adding any positions, but our coaches are splitting positions, which gives us more coaches for the same amount of uh, money, and some of them are... A, a little bit different how they're splitting them. Some are 50 50. If there's three, it's, it's 33%, uh, those type of things. So that's item four. And I have a few substitutes under seven. And then I do want to go down and, and note uh, there's a list of administrative contracts on here, all of them three years. Uh, as year four in the district, the uh, first group I'd like to note and put a star beside are our directors. We've had an opportunity downtown to, to uh, because of retirements and those things, to kind of reorganize the ASC. I would share with you that we are less than we were five and six years ago down there. And uh, I'm very pleased with the efforts and work. We're very fortunate. Uh, Maura Horgan, curriculum director, uh, Barb Quackenbush, Mindy Vaughn. And I'm going to stop right there and, and, and tell you with those three, I want our board and our community to know that when the assistant superintendent position was reduced uh, five or six ago, years ago prior to my coming here, we're a district with 6,400 students, and I, and I do share every now and then. Uh, uh, it's kind of uh, most districts with over 2,000 students have an assistant superintendent. And, and so uh, we do not have that. We're not complaining about it. We're not asking for it back. But I do. The reason I bring it up is because I want to mention that these ladies may be called a curriculum director or a personnel director or title, federal, state, and title funds, those type of things. But there are also slash uh, assistant superintendents and pick up so many other uh, duties that we all share in, and I appreciate their efforts. Great, uh, uh, great ladies. Jeff Quackenbush, uh, athletic director. I think, uh, and I believe this wholeheartedly, not only do we have the best basketball coach in Central Ohio, we have the best athletic director in Central Ohio. Jeff is just really on the ball and doing a fantastic job. What a great leader for our coaches and our kids. We appreciate Jeffrey's uh, work there. Our principals, we have John Davis and Tom Serino. Tom sitting over here to the left um, that have done wonderful things in their building. And, and I know John's not here, but I'll compliment uh, John and the Wilson staff and the students at Wilson uh, for, for uh, their building atmosphere and their student achievement. Uh, what Mr. Serino has done, Tom, I think it's what, year five and a half? somewhere in there, transition his building, uh, uh, the old Lincoln building into Heritage and moving into a new building. And uh, I would tell you that it's one of the best atmospheres in a building I've ever, ever seen uh, with staff and students. And, and uh, you know, the, they joke at me a little bit because, you know, I like to tell our kids, hey, look them in the eye, tell them who you are, learn how to talk to somebody and, you know, with confidence and look them square in the eye. You, I go through buildings and, and our kids are always polite in every building. Heritage kids beat me to the punch and saying, hey, how you doing? Uh, have a nice day there. They're very greeting, very polite in the hallways. And, and so I wanted to recognize Tom as Tom sits over there. Uh, 
Tom Bowman, Chet Coleman, Peg Dunlap, Linda Neighbors, uh, Cindy Baker, Brent Fickus, Todd King, and Jessica Corum. Uh, those are the administrators that are up for uh, contract. You go down below, you've got a, 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 a Jason Key who's sitting back here, Jason Year 2, completing Year 2 in, in the bus. And, and Jason took over in August. School started in August. And so we, we had a late rush, and, and Dave did a great job with his selection. Jason, we appreciate the work you're doing uh, uh, in our transportation department. And then uh, uh, Jeff might want to say something. Patty Stalker's on here, uh, who's the uh, assistant treasurer. That's outstanding. Wonderful lady and, and, a, and a very, very good worker. So I wanted to point that out under approval of administrative contracts. Okay, and uh, just a point for clarification on the agenda, we have 8A and then A again. Um, the approval of public notice should be item A, oh. B. So right now I would entertain a motion for superintendent's recommendations personnel 1 through 8A. So moved. Dan is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Kurt is second. Any questions or discussion? Not call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickel? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, 8B, approval of public notice. It's recommended the Board of Education approve running a public notice for the purpose of advertising a public hearing to receive input on the issue of rehiring Kim Serino, who will be retired from the Newark City Schools in the same position. Again, uh, what the Board is asked to do is to approve a public notice. You're not approving the rehiring, just the public notice. Do I have a motion to approve Superintendent Recommendation 8B, approval of public notice for Kim Serino? So moved. Second. second. Kurt is moved. I'll take Tim's second. Any discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? No. Motion carries. Okay, item B, students and curriculum, special education contracts. Again, every month we have special education contracts to approve Columbus City Schools, Eagle Wings, Liberty Center, Board of Education, and Licking Valley Local Schools. Also under uh, B6, public announcement regarding Title I and Title IIA funds. We're re required to announce basically uh, that we're going after these funds. Uh, we soon uh, we're applying for Title I and Title II funds for 2000. These are federal funds used to support the education of disadvantaged students attending New York State schools. Each year, the district collects input from parents, students, staff, and community members regarding the expenditure of these monies. If you have any ideas regarding the use of these funds, please send comments or request to Melinda Vaughn via electronic mail. All of our emails are same, so it's mvaughn at lacca.org. Uh, or in a written form to Newark City Schools, 85 East Main Street, Newark, Ohio. Do you have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations B, students and curriculum, items one through six? So moved. Dan is moved. I have a second. second. Tom is second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, under gifts, we have one gift, and we always appreciate our, our gifts. We're, we're very fortunate. We have a very um, generous uh, community. Barbara Bonfield, $150 art supplies, uh, and I believe that's probably for the high school uh, art department. One of our art departments will enjoy that, so thank you, Barbara. I mentioned before, and I'll mention again, uh, we don't have a value on the furniture from State Farm, but uh, State Farm continues to step up to plate. Think about us. And uh, it's a great organization out there. A lot of wonderful people that that uh, do a lot of a lot of things for our students and and uh, staff here. So thank you very much to the State Farm people. I know uh, Bev and and uh, Dan. If you would, uh, when you see some of those people, that uh, sure. let them know. And and uh, Dave and I and Larry Williams will really appreciate uh, the opportunity to go do that. So sure. Do I have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendation C, gifts? So moved. Tom is moved. Second. Kurt is second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. 
Okay, under business, <coughs> item D2, advertising of bids, it's recommended the Board of Education authorize the treasurer to advertise for bids for the following project, the NHS auditorium seating replacement. Uh, Dave's very hard uh, to go out and uh, uh, I hope and pray that the new seats will last as long as the old seats have in there. Uh, again, not part of the OSFC project, so uh, uh, Dave continually looks at his budget and, and uh, moves forward that way. So thank you, Dave, for that. Do you have a motion to approve Superintendent's Recommendation D, business? So moved. Second. Kurt is moved. Tim is second. Any discussion? If not call the roll, please. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, under Board of Education reports, um, can we do that? Yeah. You want to do it? You want to? You can. All right. Um, intent, to, intent to adopt board policies. Um, it's recommended the Board of Education announce its intent to adopt the following policy. It's shown in the appendix, an announcement be made of this policy will be available for the board, staff, and the public for inspection in the Office of the Superintendent of Schools from March 12th through April 8, 2013. File 5112, entrance requirements. Also under B, adoption of board policies. Uh, it's recommended the Board of Education adopt the board education policy listed below as shown in the appendix as announced at the February 11, 2013 meeting of the Board of Education. File 1520, Employment of Administrators, and File 8800, Religious Patriotic Ceremonies and Observations. I have a motion to adopt Board Policies 52, 1520, Employment of Administrators, and 8800, Religious and Patriotic Ceremonies and Observances. So moved. Dan is moved. I have a second. Second. Tom, thank you. Any discussion? Not call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. You will go with that. I can do that, Money. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, board comments. We can start down there with Tim. Well, just in encouraged um, seeing so much good going on in our district with the kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, succeeding in so many different sporting events, uh, musical events, uh, it's uh, plays, spring concerts, all kinds of things coming. Uh, it's a good time to be uh, here in Newark. I pass. I'd uh, like to congratulate the legend folks. Um, also, our athletes that were here being recognized. Um, one thing that Doug alluded to in reference to that, that I'll just mention, sometimes when you go to some of the sporting events and you see how some of the kids from the other schools conduct themselves, it makes you appreciate our young people. You know, I have yet to see anything where I've thought, ooh, that's embarrassing to have somebody representing our community and our school act that way, that our kids really conduct themselves in a way we can all be proud of. And that's a testament not only to the kids, but also the coaches. Um, I'd like to thank the parents that came with their concerns about um, things at Cherry Valley. I think all five of us either have students or kids in the district or have had. Some of us are in that have had age mode. Um, and I think the bowlers can tell you that when Doug says, I'll look into it, it will get looked into that uh, really appreciate you bringing your, uh, your concerns. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, those of you that are advocate readers maybe saw the story about the public records requests hunting salary information and noticed that we were among the ones who did respond. I think, uh, what do we have, 800 employees total or something like that? And we got that information turned around in two days. Um, quite a task. I think that's that's you, isn't it, Seth? Wasn't you? No, I, I mean, I, I delivered it to them. That's actually, I didn't do the work. Barbara's personnel department and the treasurer's department worked very well together to turn that information around. That's quite a job. Yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, I, and I, I just mentioned that because that's an indication that we try to be transparent 
any information that's asked for we are willing as a district to provide um, with that I'll pass I'd just like to uh, to say thanks and I'm back to thanks and gratitude most of the time here and I really am sincere about that um, I really am thankful for the the progress we have in the electronic environment and and how much we're pushing that forward um, several of us have have children that are students in college right now or have graduated from college and, and I'm sure that they can join me in saying that if your child shows up to college without a proficiency in electronic environment they're in for a world of hurt because uh, they'll have to very quickly get up to speed using their own devices and I'm particularly pleased to see that the bring your own device issue is alive and well and they're pushing that forward because, because to me part of our mission part of our vision in New York City schools is to prepare our students to to be competitive in a global environment and folks the, the world is getting smaller all the time and, and again it's so important that we prepare our students properly and, and doing so through this electronic media just cannot be overlooked and it has to be part of what we're about so I, I'm, I'm pleased about that uh, another thing I'd like to comment on if you'll permit me is uh, is a, again we have a number of teacher retirements uh, that, that are coming up but we have 15 14 six, 14, right 14 this year you know and, and we seem to have gone through a real catharsis at that level in New York City schools the last few years uh, bar probably in the last three years we were about today, at least 70, between 50 and 60, 50 and 60. And, and you can imagine for any school district the loss of intellectual capital that goes out the door when these teachers retire but I got to tell you what again what I feel good about and what I'm thankful of, of is that we have people who find individuals that can interview those people and they can step up and be contributing and, and stand out uh, yeah we lost a lot of intellectual capital that walked out the door with these retirements but we found a lot of great people to step up and, and again that's due to the to the uh, teamwork that we have at the director level and and others so so thank you for your good hard work with that uh, finally just let me mention we continue to be thankful for the gifts that are given New York City School District you've heard me say this before that companies and organizations have a lot of different things they can do with their money and to think that they think enough of the New York City school system to, to, to give us the gifts that they have, we're truly indeed grateful for that. So again, it, uh, it makes me feel pretty good that we're in the district that we are. Jeff. It's fantastic to be in New York City schools. It's fantastic to be a treasure in New York City schools. We have fantastic uh, corporate partners that I cannot begin to name them all because it seems like every time New York City Schools has a need that's not funded by the state or the local taxpayers, our corporate partners find a way to help us out. And I really do appreciate that, each and every one. And when they do, I try to go personally to somebody in that corporation and thank them. And I want to publicly express that to all the companies and for the little private businesses that step up time and time again. I also want to thank all the booster clubs. They help out the budget quite a bit. I mean more than I can explain and I'm not just talking about the athletic boosters I'm talking about the band boosters and 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 they just keep going on choral boosters and there's one booster club after another they take on a lot of responsibility they they support our kids I'd like to personally <coughs> thank each one of them and I want to put a plug in right now some of the people may not know but our band uniforms are 17 years old that's what the band marches in every Friday night at the ball games and the band boosters are trying to raise money <coughs> to replace those. It's going to cost about $50,000 for our band to replace the 17 year old band uniforms. They're not just sitting on their rear ends and they're not just waiting for somebody to give them a handout. They had a, a puzzle contest uh, within the last week that raised about 500 bucks. You say that's not much but that's one band uniform that they're nipping away at that $50,000. I want to put a plug in for them that on June 15th they put out invitations that are going to have a golf outing that's a good weekend for the guys to go and for the women to go too. It's Father's Day weekend. Go golfing on Saturday, have a cookout on Sunday. It's $70 per person, $280 for a team. Get your team, go golfing with the band boosters and help pay for the band uniforms. They're trying to raise the money. They're working hard as all the band boosters do in New York City schools. And I thank them and I cannot thank them enough for what they do for our students. Great. Um, also, uh, they, I, I'll tell you something they had that was really neat. 
they had a uh, uh, what, what type of puzzle? Jigsaw puzzle. Jigsaw yeah. puzzle uh, competition. Uh, raised six hundred dollars. Myra Brandenburg uh, ran that, and I know we had a high school team, we had an ASC team, uh, community teams, and they raised six hundred dollars. And, and the reason I point that out is, is because although the board suspended uh, activity fees. Uh, this year and our numbers are starting to rise a little bit and we're starting to show a little bit of success with that they're still responsible for transportation and so uh, just that one day event that that Myra and the band boosters organized will pay for a uh, uh, a trip or help them pay for a trip to a contest or or something that way and they're going to have another one so uh, it's it's really good stuff I point out to the board and, and the community uh, a report I put on your desk and I know that uh, some of you insurance guys, I know Kurt's really going to love reading this. He'll probably be tweeting about this report at some point or, or another. But basically, uh, three years ago, uh, we formed a wellness committee in the district. And, uh, you know, I see Susie Fox sitting out here. She's, she's part of that. Basically, I have representation from all of our uh, buildings, uh, along with the AFC C building. We meet about once a month, and, and they go back to their uh, buildings and, and do some healthy things and we we've done uh, district walks this past year we did a walk to the White House in conjunction with the election uh, we give away prizes for the team that gets there first or if you get there then you're in a drawing those type of things but what this report is now it's two years of data uh, that we have from our wellness fair and we have that uh, during election day uh, pretty much in the morning as we're doing professional development and just a couple things I, I would point out to the board. Um, number one, uh, as we meet with Medical Mutual, and uh, I know a few years ago, Medical Mutual had 58% of the school business in the state of Ohio. Plus, this compares us with last year, and it com also compares us with their book of business. And, and so not just school business. But when you look at this, we blew them off the chart this year in our participation patient with our online health assessment and and uh, health fair I see Gemma sitting up here she helps a lot at that health fair Myra Brandenburg is really the point person on that but you can see that last year we had 51 people participate in the in the health screen this year we had 247 that's what blew the medical mutual people off they said they just don't see that they just don't see that at school so I wanted to point that out to the board because again we're trying to get to our staff number one we want people to be health conscious and feel good about themselves and, and uh, you know, a healthier person and is a more productive person and, and uh, uh, happier uh, around kids. And, and so our kids benefit from that. Uh, but we're concerned about our health. And, and I'm not obviously not going to say the name or what happened, but we also uh, this year had someone do a, a screening that detected something uh, that they really needed to, to check. So that's why we do this uh, stuff, obviously. But it also helps Jeff when he's negotiating our contract, our health insurance contract, because I'm sure we have a lot of people sitting up here at this table with the insurance people that we have here. I'll tell you what, what our big what our big bargaining chip is with health insurance is our loss ratio. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's great that you've been with Medical Mutual X amount of years, but and so we want our people to keep that down because uh, uh, if, if you look at what we pay in health insurance costs, uh, a, f a percent or two is huge and, and I like to say hey there are jobs in our benefits and those those jobs are programs for kids and so from that financial standpoint of it uh, <clears throat> Jeff I'd ask you maybe to say uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure don't quote me but it's uh, the industry increase in health insurance about 18 percent and we've been well below that uh, We've been about eight percent over the last four years, average. Yeah, we've been about eight. So, so we're really focusing on from from a, a wellness committee several things. We want to provide some programs for people uh, to to know that there's uh, uh, some programs out there to, to keep keep healthy. If you uh, flip real quick uh, to page uh, eight, uh, one of the things that we're starting to learn uh, from this is what are our, our major risk, and then. Uh, you can see body weight, blood pressure, stress, those type of things. So we'll, we'll do some things from a wellness standpoint to try to help those areas out. And so that's what we're starting to find out. And again, we just have two years of data here. But every year we do, it's a, a, another year we can look at some things. And, 
and uh, so you know the the uh, wellness committee then will do some things maybe some programs that'll you know help our our uh, employees with with those uh, uh, risk one of the, one of the things the last thing I'd point out here because there's a lot to go through and I'll I'll let the board uh, go through it one of the things that I was very pleased to see and very proud of if you turn to page 18 <clears throat> see work performance assessment uh, continued job satisfaction uh, if you look that uh, on job satisfaction for our employees the areas are strongly agree agree disagree uh, disagree strongly and does not apply uh, look at the, the agree or strongly agree and agree categories and I think that's why our atmospheres in our building are, are, are very good uh, we had 80 people uh, say they agree strongly with their uh, job satisfaction and 157 say they agree with it so uh, again that shows that our employees like what they do uh, they're getting a lot of satisfaction out of what they do and you can only see that we only had 10 and, and two uh, disagree with that so that told me a lot and tells us a lot uh, that our people are are happy here uh, and it's a great place to be and so uh, you know and uh, Tim Tim will tell you because he's getting ready for me to say it it's a great time to be a cat uh, down there I say that a lot and it is a great time some other neat things I think are that are going on in the district I think this is awesome. I'm going to ask Kurt to help me out here. Uh, we have uh, a two newer graduates that, that are, are doing things. Uh, Judge Baldwin, Judge Craig Baldwin, is a newer graduate. Uh, Kurt, you, you want to talk maybe about uh, what sure what uh, is and who's going to swear him in, please? Sure. Uh, Judge Baldwin was appointed to the uh, third. Uh, uh, it's a third appeals, uh, third district appeals uh, court, and uh, he'll be sworn in in the next three weeks. Um, he has gotten the federal judge, uh, another Newark graduate, uh, Greg Frost, to swear him in, and uh, we're going to have that swearing in ceremony here at the school. I think it'll be nice, give the students an opportunity to be here, also give the community opportunity to be here and see uh, from a uh, we certainly uh, appreciate the the athletes that come out of Newark schools, but uh, but to see these two Newark graduates and what they've accomplished, these are not uh, these are these are highly ranked jobs. So uh, this is a this is a big thing for Newark. Yeah. Thanks, uh, appreciate that. Um, also, we'll be partnering a, a little bit with that program, and we have a young man who who uh, not only got an appointment to uh, uh, the Naval Academy, he also got an opportunity at West Point and that's Willie Henderson uh, to have one opportunity like that is tremendous to have two is just simply off the chart and so we want uh, Willie uh, we're going to do a signing for for Willie at, at that time too and uh, to say hey uh, Judge Frost Judge Baldwin uh, Willie Henderson these are a type of kids uh, that Newark is is producing and so great people uh, so we thank uh, Judge Baldwin for thinking of us, and we're very proud of, of what he's accomplished. We're very proud of Willie. Last thing I promise you, Ms. Nickham, uh, I get an opportunity as a uh, uh, secretary of the Central District Athletic Board to go to a lot of uh, events in, in the Central District, and, and uh, one was such as the bowling team uh, down at the state tournament, but a lot of district-level tournaments, uh, uh, volleyball, boys and girls basketball, those type of things. And uh, I am always, always very proud of our uh, kids and how they represent uh, ourselves. And, 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 and I will tell you that I'm at the Coliseum quite a bit for basketball. Nobody, and I mean nobody, packs them in like Newark at the Coliseum. We, we are, uh, I was there all day Saturday, three basketball games. Uh, Olin Tangies played in two of them. Northland played in one. Um, no, it's escaping me who else played in the morning. Not close to the crowd that Newark had uh, down to Coliseum supporting our, our students. And I think that says a lot about, uh, and that's one of the things that I really like about our district and our community is it's, it's a big district, but it's got a small town flavor. And uh, we really appreciate the support that our community gives our, our, our kids. And I know our kids appreciate that. And we may not win every event, 
uh, but we do in terms of attitude and, and uh, uh, those type of things that uh, sportsmanship, all, all, those, all those things make us so proud of our, our kids and who we are and make us feel good about the uh, kind of students we're putting out. So it's a great time to be a cat. Okay, thank you, Doug. Uh, I'd like to uh, echo a couple of things that have already been touched on, but uh, Tom and Doug have both talked about the conduct of our students at different <coughs> events and uh, marching bands have been brought up. Most marching band competitions actually, in addition to the band and the, the technical awards, have spirit awards and conduct awards. And I will tell you, competition after competition, the Newark band brings home that spirit award or that conduct award. Our students, fine arts, um, athletic, always represent themselves well. Our spectators represent themselves well, and, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, you, you see it just every sport, every fine arts, every competition. You see our community and our students conducting themselves in an appropriate manner, and I really appreciate that. It says a lot about our district. I am so excited about BYOD. You have no idea. And I should clarify that's BYOD, bring your own device. <laughs> um, some of you may have heard something else. Uh, you have no idea how long I've been begging for that and hoping for that. It's going to change the landscape for our students. Uh, we put so many opportunities out there for our students and our students that grab onto those opportunities and take advantage of them, they do well. We do very well. Those students do well. And so I'm very excited this is going, this is just a wonderful thing for our kids and um, I think they're going to, this is going to be one of the things they grab onto and I think that kids that haven't been engaged in other things th that are starting to get on the technology bandwagon that we're doing are really going to grab hold of this and it's going to make a huge difference because like I said just a second ago, our students that do well and take advantage of these opportunities do very well um, after they leave Newark High School and are very successful and so it's very exciting um, and I, this is just going to give more of those students that edge and that desire to to be productive so uh, thank you welcome Angie and thank you to everyone on the uh, the tech team thank you to the board for taking that step in technology last year and for people like Maura Horgan that have championed that idea and presented that and shown us how to do it um, I really appreciate that and um, other than that, I think we're done. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Tim is moved. Any seconds? Second. How about Dan? <laughs> Call the roll, please. You want to do the eyes? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Nickham? Yes. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>